In the mid-90s, East 17 were one of the biggest bands in Britain. But after 20 hits and 14 million records, they imploded in one of the most acrimonious sagas in pop history. Something's going to be sorted out. He didn't mean what he said. Today, ten years on, and against all odds, they're attempting to stage a reunion in the hope of getting another million pound record deal. But will the wild boys of Walthamstow be able to overcome the bitter legacy of their past? He's ruined our career. No radio's gonna play our songs. No one's getting us on TV. <laughs> Piss me off. Wanker. He was a nightmare. He was totally and utterly unreliable. That must have been coming for a long time. He just don't like me. I don't like him. Are you ever meant to get things started? You got shit like that happening, you know what I mean? Every day there's something wrong, you know, that's, oh, I ain't doing this, I ain't doing that. So I'll be There can only be one leader, can't there? Over a decade ago, pop culture was dominated by the rivalry between two boy bands. The street urchins of East 17 fought squeaky clean Take That for the hearts and minds of teenage girls. The term boy band, we hated it. We hated it. Boy bands are like fluffy. We're not fluffy, we're, we're rough, you know what I mean? Me on the floor, on the plane, I'll be I mean, we were not fucking boy bands, but we was, weren't we? Do you know what I mean? We was. We had a choice, it was us or take that, and I think if you chose us, you was A clued up, better taste than music, and you were right. <laughs> During the spring of 2006, East 17's arch-rivals Take That staged a triumphant reunion tour. The concert mixed muscle-bound men with pouring rain and was hailed as one of the best reunion gigs in pop history. It left some East London boys pondering. We probably are coming out because Take That are. Because they are, then we should. Makes sense to you, you know what I mean? Because we, we were rivals. You know, it'd be stupid not to, you know what I mean? But one major problem stood in the way of an East 17 comeback. Track your face, right? The prime movers in the band, Tony Mortimer and Brian Harvey, haven't spoken for ten years since East 17 broke up over drugs and money. I just got out of control. I <laughs> just got out of control. I wasn't trying to be a problem, but I just started seeing what was really going on here and how everyone's making money out of us. Obviously, Tony earned a lot of money because he was a songwriter, but when he's 17 ended, I had to sell my house because I couldn't afford the mortgage anymore. There was a time when I was sitting on an aeroplane with Tony and said to me, how much money you got in the bank? I said, I don't know, about two, five hundred pounds. And he sort of laughed and went, Oh, I've got 200 grand. And I was just like, oh, all right. All four members of East 17 still live near where they grew up. But three of them don't carry the trappings of having been in one of Britain's biggest selling bands. Former plumber Brian Harvey lives at his nan's old house. Since leaving East 17, he's suffered a catalogue of personal disasters, including suicide attempts and a bizarre car accident. I don't want to end up on the dole queue. I'm fed up with plumbing, so I'm doing my own bathroom as it is. I've had enough of that already. And, um, it'd just be good, man, to be a little pop star again for a little while. John Hendy has gone back to his old job as a roofer. And Terry Coldwell, who lives at his girlfriend's parents' house with new baby Brooke, occasionally works as a club DJ. The odd one out is Tony Mortimer who made a multi-million pound fortune from writing East 17 songs. He lives in a massive mock Tudor mansion just a few miles away from the rest of the band. But he hasn't spoken to the other three for ten years. He took East 17's breakup badly, 
suffering eating disorders and agoraphobia. Tony is now a member of a spiritualist church and regularly visits a medium. It was his medium who provoked the possibility of reuniting with his ex-bandmates. I go to see mediums or a medium anyway because I think it's fantastic and it's so intriguing. I asked the question when I ever perform again. She said, yes, I see you on stage and there's four of you and you're performing. That was last March. Tony hasn't ever said anything to me about a prediction or any mediums or anything to speak to him, but I know he's a very spiritual sort of person. All of us reforming again, I just thought, oh, Tony's skin. <laughs> Tony's been talking to a medium, but not to his former friends. Bizarrely, it's taken the help of an East 17 website for them to get through to Tony. I opened up the paper and I see Tony in there saying we'll play another day and I thought, bloody hell, I couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? And uh, there was a girl called Amy from Australia who had set up a, a website called East 17 Mania and uh, I heard she was in contact with Tony. Tony emailed her and stuff, so I, I joined the website. <laughs> and uh, I, I gave her my number and said, like, if you get in contact with Tony, could you please tell me to ring me? I'd like to know if it's the truth in the paper or if it ain't. And, uh, yeah, so uh, four weeks later, I got a phone call from Tony saying, hello, and, yeah, it's, it's true, like, he'd, he'd like to do some stuff again. And that's how it all happened, really. Four weeks after a series of phone calls between the band, they agree to meet in a rehearsal room. It's the first time they've all been in a studio together since Tony sacked Brian from the band a decade ago. When the four of us are there, there is no problems. We don't have any problems. They kind of go on when we've all come apart and everyone else is talking. Do you know what I mean? I think between us four, I think we're all right. You know what I mean? We're all right. No, I think it's wicked, mate. I think, what a laugh, eh? Do you know what I mean? Another go, all over again. It'd be funny. Oh, We're coming amazing. for you, take that. We're coming for you. There's a lot of work to do vocally and that. I want to hear yeah. what all the BBs are doing and all the all yeah. different tracks. <laughs> yeah, you go. Right. Yeah. How you doing, mate? Good. <laughs> I haven't spoke to the guys since 1997, all of us together, so we all had to get back and sit in a room together, you know, see how it was, uh, which went really smoothly, uh, to be honest. So no warm-up then? <laughs> straight, straight into a filmed... Someone at Love sounds good. Does it? Do you want to play, do you want to play it to him? Yeah. Because John, we've got John on a, on a bit and that as well. Do you want to just run that little mid-late bit of the um, Someone to Love? A little bit, that, isn't it? Yeah. Like it. What song's that? That's uh, <laughs> Thunder. Less than an hour into the reunion, and tensions seem to have thawed. But there are some from the bad old days who aren't convinced the thaw will last. Tony loathed and detested Brian. He, he wouldn't even travel in the same car with them uh, uh, to go into interviews and gigs. So that's why I was surprised that Tony tolerated. You know, the idea of a, a possible reunion, I thought that that was really odd. All the young mums that were little girls throwing their knickers on the stage, they'll be very disappointed when they see how they've aged and, and they don't have all that kind of youthfulness and those sexy bodies that they had. I think they'll be a little disappointed. We used to be big fans when we was little. 
And we can wait to come again. E17 all the way. All right, all right. I don't forgot left before I got signed on.